the first item of craft for a fiction writer is to say, although I have always loved these writers and I want to be in that group, if my talent tells me that I'm actually some freak show over here, you have to do that. You, you can only write your best in a mode that's authentic to you, and it's not always our, our choice. You know, when you're young, you think you have to know what your story means, and you have to execute, and you have to kind of preach, and you have to be in control of it. And now it seems to me like you have to be not in control of it. Uh, you have to be looking at it as an organism and trying to feel its actual energy and almost be in a dialogue with it. Like, what do you know? What do you, what do you feel like doing today? Do you, oh, you want to go over there? Okay, let's go over there. Uh, which is really the exciting part of it. It's, you're not in control of the story. It's, you know, you're serving it in a certain way. It's almost like a, in biology, you've got a little seed crystal and it, it grows organically on its own. So uh, in a perfect story, that's what happens. Just a little bit of play that becomes a little more play, but a little more serious. And pretty soon the story starts being about something uh, and you go from there. Any writer's block at all? No, not really. I mean, I have another f a form of it, which is I get about halfway through something and lock up, which is, you know. But that, um, the, Einstein had this thing. He said, uh, no worthy, pr no worthy uh, problem is ever solved in the plane of its original conception. So that means sometimes you, st you start a story and you start to develop a feeling of what it's about. And at about that time, the story says, no, you don't. I'm not that easy, dummy, you know? And it locks up. So then you have to wait and wait, and I have to try a bunch of different, you know, kind of cul-de-sacs. And then at some point, the story will then go, okay, now you can, now I'll tell you what I'm really about. So that, that's, not, that's sort of like writer's block, but you're working during it. But if you looked at it, you know, in terms of a productivity graph, you'd be stuck at, at page eight for two or three years. Um, but your subconscious is working, so. Fiction is the element of escapism from reality. Uh, what got you so intrigued with the idea of writing for fiction? Well, to me, I actually thought the opposite. I thought that fiction is a way of um, avoiding the facts so that you can get more efficiently at the truth. You know, if you just stick with the facts, you, you actually, it's easy to get mired in sort of habitual ways of thinking and common ways of thinking. But with fiction, you're allowed to depart from all that and um, take certain elements, whatever you like, and combine them in a way that really speaks to the deep truths, you know, life, death, love, all that kind of stuff. You know. You've been called a writer's writer. Does that in any way inhibit you? No, I like that actually. I mean, I would also like to be a reader's writer, you know. So for me, part of my whole thing since I started was to, uh, you know, use, you have to use your gifts. So my gifts are kind of edge, there's a little cruelty, there's humor. Uh, a lot of these gifts might tend to keep the audience small. So you have to honor your gifts. But at the same time, those can start becoming reflexively closed down. So you're just assuming that you're that kind of writer, whereas maybe your spirit wants to make you a bigger writer. So that's kind of what I'm thinking now is can I um, reach out authentically to more people without sort of, you know, uh, selling out or becoming banal. Speak to those who want to become a story writer that are just starting out. Well, I mean, I think it, good for you, first of all, because that's a really, it's a, it's, a, it's a form that will take your, all your energy and all your love and it'll reward you. And even if you never get published, it'll reward you. It, it, it's a way of thinking about life that forces you out of your habits a little bit. Practically, I, I really believe what Malcolm Gladwell said about 10,000 hour, the 10,000 hour rule, that if you want to do something, you have to put in a bunch of hours. And it doesn't even matter if, you, if they're effective. In fact, they're not going to be when you're a young writer. There's going to be a lot of flailing around. But I think there's something that happens deep in your subconscious when you're spending that number of hours that comes to fruition at some point, where suddenly you know what to do. You know, you, you, have, um, you have kind of powers that you shouldn't have. Uh, uh, and so I say, you know, as for young people, just keep doing it. Even if you feel lost or you feel like there's no structure or you're not being successful, it's the hours that actually will produce results down the line. I think that's actually true. You know, I think it's, it's neurologically true.